to this episode of the Trainer Feed. We are your hosts. My name is Angel Sanchez, and with me I have Mr. Jacques Delogere. Hey, Roman, what's going on? Uh, no David today, but um, he will be back soon, soon enough. When he's out of class, whenever that is. Yeah, he's in he's in class he's... studying. He's doing his his school stuff. We he's hope. He's a busy man. We <laughs> he's a busy man. How am I gonna get hold of? But he's still a good one for sure. How you feeling, man? Feeling good. Feeling good. Um, taking January by storm. And um, we're ready to, we're almost through January into February, which is kind of crazy. Um, how about you? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, no, I'm, um, I've been pretty much just me and Alfie for the whole, what, well, it's been like five and a half weeks now. So I saw Alex down around Christmas time. But besides that, I've been here and honestly just made the most of being by myself to just work more and, kind of organize a lot of stuff that i've put on hold and like uh just reassess where i am in life i think i've spoke to you about this as well and like kind of like uh fine tune the direction i want to go and mm-hmm. that's been about it really and just watch watching a ton of sport like the nfl was just this weekend right like and the giants are the big win which we'll get to in a second but um and i know you came to one of my classes unfortunately we could not get hold of david because he's a hard man to reach um but got you to come and that's about it man honestly just like staying busy uh thankfully it's not been too cold this january because normally it's cold as heck yeah and uh the only snow we've had was very very minimal so uh, i have no complaints shocker which i normally do yeah no it's been um uh, it's been really good um even a day like today it's going to be in the 50s so that's pretty good as well perfect um let's talk about the giants so why don't you why don't you lead on this one yeah sure so the if you're listening to this and you're not aware of the nfl or don't follow the nfl it's not an issue but the giants had their first win in the playoffs in 11 years it's the first time in six years they were in the playoffs uh last time they won the playoffs eli man did lead them all the way to the promised land and win the super bowl so but the main reason i want to bring it up is because as impressive as it is that they've gotten this far, I think one people were surprised they even had a winning record to made the playoffs, you know, because not all teams that had a winning record made the playoffs, but also won a playoff game. Like you can argue that the team they beat Minnesota maybe aren't like the strongest of teams, but um, what I'm most impressed with is it's pretty much the same core of guys for the last two or three years. Definitely the offensive line and the defense has had some additions to it to make it better and stronger but for the most part it's just been a turnaround from coaching and that's where we want to talk about today is how much does coaching affect the end result the product if you know the process is different but if the people in place that variable are the same Mm -hmm. I, i think it just to me it just shows how some coaches get the best out of someone and this isn't just in a professional sport this is just in performance and and whether it be nutrition you know like if someone's working with a nutritionist and the person has different modalities they might not get the best they might not gel with that client that patient and excuse me and changing that coach and you know it's if we have clients listen to this we don't want you to think like all right you have to leave us it's not that we definitely hope that you're trusting us in this process but just to, to see the bigger picture that it's possible that a different coach of a different approach modality can have significant results i think it's it's just shows um so i thought that'd be interesting to talk about yeah for sure so you know it is incredible turnaround for the team that uh everybody kind of called out and said they won't go anywhere for the whole season even up until this right. last recent game they were just like everybody was voting for the vikings it's like you can't give the giants any credit it's like mm. they just always even when we had like one of the best scores in the league at one point it was like now nah, we're still putting like another team above you like it was above like you. tampa yeah. bay yeah. is better oh on the, on the like power rankings did you see that yeah, every the, week, power the power rankings. rankings every week it was Dude. like teams with worse records were who was above up. yep yep I noticed that, and it was, it, like you said, it was teams of, like, if you were equal record, you can be like, all right, they've got the same number of wins, but right. this seems a bit better because they play better teams or only lost to better teams or whatever. But, like, as yeah. like you said, I saw teams that were, like, two or three wins less, yeah. and they had, and they were, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, all, all right, right that- sure. Yeah, and then um, the other thing is, like, they always make it so it's hard for the Giants to win during those playoff games. 
Um, and specifically that play, um, there were a couple of plays, but the biggest one to me was um, the uh, the penalty against uh, Dexter, Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence. It was roughing like roughing the passer. the passer. I was like, come on. That was ridiculous. How... So that's, if... a, that's a turnaround because uh, that was a, yeah that's a kind of penalty that s- keeps the game alive um i think it was about to be a third down yeah if it wasn't for the penalty so you're like all right two more plays and they could wrap it up and they were further down the field right um i think that was even a third down i don't know it was either a second or third down but just a terrible corner if you don't follow the nfl and you're listening to this essentially what happened was a very soft call that should have been given but because in the league they try and protect the position of the quarterback it was it was given um which is a shame because sometimes those calls can really kill i don't know if you saw any of the seattle and san francisco game uh i saw like halfway and then towards the end of it i didn't see the beginning so you saw the half time the, the last like minute or two before the half right yeah so yeah. The quarterback for Seattle, um, my God, Geno Smith is running, and this 49ers guy just like smashes his head as he's going to the ground, and he costs him a penalty. Right? That mm-hmm. is completely that's that's deserved that he got the mm-hmm. penalty because he was like going in late, hit him when he was defenseless, boom, boneheaded play. This other yeah. one he said of Dexter Lawrence was terrible. Was there another play you were going to say that was? No, no, no. That was no. That was the one. It was uh, yeah, that was the one. I just felt like they always try to make it very difficult. Them and then also uh, historically the Saints. Whenever the Saints get into playoff contention, the Saints always have a really difficult time, I feel, because of the bullshit calls. but Oh, they've had a yeah, few oh of the years, haven't they? Yeah, I guess the Rams, the pass interference call not given. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that year, the Rams won the Super Bowl, the Saints... I remember that, yeah. He clearly interfered with him and nothing was given. And then the Saints... Yeah set up for a field goal with time on the clock or something it was yeah yeah but it's it's crazy because um daniel jones it just the quarterback for the giants looks like a different man he looks yeah Did, like his numbers were like insane 25? too he's 25 i think 25 or 26 years old Dude well, looks like younger older man. no he looks older same with uh jalen smith i think he's 24 it's like grown you mean jalen hurts jalen hurts sorry jalen hurts I'm yeah, Daniel but Jalen Smith, Hurts yeah. is yeah. like a as a monster. He's another. He's like another level. He's like the the jokes were funny there. I don't know if you saw. They were like Daniel Jones, just a white Michael Vick, or like because oh of what he was running. And what do they but, call him? They call him like uh, Vanilla something. Vanilla Vic. Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh my and, goodness. Uh, but it's just and also like a healthy Saquon Barkley. He's he's so healthy this year. Um mm-hmm. and I but did you so do you know the celebration, the gritty? Mm-hmm. So did you see what the guy for the Giants Thibodeau did? No. What do you do? This guy has me rolling. He's got to be the funniest guy in the league. This guy does the gritty on the Vikings logo <laughs> as they get the fourth down <laughs> stop. It's just Holy smokes. They're like this guy's a menace. <laughs> he was also the guy that in week seventeen when they play the Colts and they like they yeah, blew them out. Hit. Right. So he, he sacks that guy Nick Foles, right? And Nick Foles is holding his rib cage. This guy is doing the snow angels yeah. on the floor next to him. Yeah. And like someone said, ah, oh, he didn't realize it. I don't know. This guy was like doing the put to sleep um like yeah, the gesture. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, eh. so I was like, it's 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 funny it's not very tasteful uh, it's kind of like borderline so that, i thought that was funny just because again i love seeing these teams that are great in the regular season like justin jefferson the receiver whose celebration that is the gritty oh, like yeah. he was okay he was good but i i never trust Kirk cousins man that quarterback fight i don't trust him and then what did he do he threw a check down short pass on fourth and eight to the guy who's not gonna make it i'm like yeah. thank you um but yeah they got the eagles this weekend um I don't know. I want to see what the spread was because it was. I think the spreads are really interesting this week. Um, but again, to the to the main point of uh, this this episode, it's just the coach comes, the GM comes in, right? He was working with the Bills organization, who'd worked with Josh Allen, who's been like a an offensive phenom, like not just throwing but passing the ball and is a big body too. 
to take down. And Daniel Jones has, I don't want to say that same style, but is a running back, is a, running back, is a quarterback that can run, right? Because yeah. Kirk Cousins, every time he was under pressure, he couldn't run. Daniel Jones was like, run the ball, he was good. But it's just like every play they did, like it was like well executed, the right play, the right time. It, it's just crazy that like a year or two ago, if you'd watch them under, I think, Joe Judge is who they had. It was just so predictable. And it's just mm-hmm. so great to see that a different mind comes in and just makes that team. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's But it's like buying into a system, right? Like whenever I hear, yeah. um, I listen to a lot of NHL podcasts and when they talk about coaching and when the best, better coaches are the ones that are just like, they don't, it's so old school now to be like, losing your voice and shout and shout and shout and shout at people to like get them like upset and like to be scared to like make mistakes. Like a lot more coaches I hear now are like a mistake in the game. You're going to make it like, or like depends what kind of mistake, right? Cause if you were like the Cowboys kicker who like could not kick a field goal. And then if you saw any that, that, that was, was another wild. level of not being able to perform. <laughs> um, because that, that can cost you the game. And like, they're, they're lucky that, they didn't they won that game wasn't even close yeah. but that's a performance thing like that have to that so if you didn't see the cowboys and the buccaneers fans or oh, folks sorry uh this guy missed four extra points in a row like i don't think that's ever been done it's just the point of no. saying that he just like could not hit it through the uprights you know and it's only like 30 yards out as well yeah um so it's it's just interesting that the mental insight someone can have and the focus but a lot of the coaching now i'm hearing you know i imagine like you do something similar with your clients. Like if someone doesn't get it right, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't go wrong. It's like, I don't worry about it. Like you didn't hurt yourself. Like nothing, yeah. nothing was lost. Like just next time we do this, focus more on this or focus more on that. Like they, I think there's probably, I'm speaking out loud here, but I'm sure there's probably studies to even support that as well. That more of an approach of just less aggressive, less like humiliating someone, humiliating a team and just like letting them learn from it. But I don't know if you have it, like that approach or i don't know if you have like anything to say on that on that regards uh no i mean i was gonna i was gonna make a a point about it but then i also noticed um a lot of people just focusing on well let me let me say two things so the first thing i want to say is like the coaching the coaching style really mattered for this giants team and i think also the progression that they had with the coach so not only just like It might not have just been the coach, even though I want to give, you know, everybody all the credit. It's the players. It's the team. I think it was also a little bit of the schedule. It allowed Mm. that gradual progression for them to have, like, not so challenging opponents to facing more challenging opponents. And then also getting those wins and getting those reps in and even getting the confidence. Yeah, because then you earn it. And then everybody's like, okay, we're going forward on fourth. We're going to keep pushing. You know, we got to create these options. You know, and then defense looking out for the offense, the offense looking out for the defense. It's like when one point, even special teams stepping in, they were all so like they were just working together to get the W. It wasn't like, you know, one side was just pushing a whole lot more than the other um, in order to make game winning plays. It was like everybody was working. Um, So that was really and even the backups Then the backups started stepping up, you know, that that I think was like really special to see. And I think that obviously like the coach has a big role to play in in regards to developing the team and developing the system and just managing the players mindsets and managing their uh kind of like just managing like their their routines but the the individual like each person i don't know there's just so many different points like you know each person on that team like uh in the last game that yeah even saquon like hyping up you know, the offensive line, yeah. right? Like in after, you know, they come back and they just like, you know, they punt it away. Then you see Saquon on the sidelines, just hyping people up. It's like the, the head coach's job to kind of be like, we missed an opportunity. We need to do better. You guys need to step up. Right. And then walk away. And then it's within that team, that offensive line to kind of like talk to each other and like boost each other up and like, all right, now let's take a look. How are we going to change this? How are we going to do this? Right. Because now like there are little leadership roles within the, the within. Whole, yeah, within the whole team. So it's not all relying on one person. Um, and I think that that was really uh, that was pivotal, too. And we're seeing a lot more of that, which is great. And, and to piggyback on what you just said, I don't know if you know. So Kenny Galladay, who signed there for a lot of money and he's he's just finished his second year, right? Regular season. And he's not really performed to the money he's earning. 
But in that game, in the last game of the season, he finally got his first touchdown. You're like, all right, like, okay, like you get some confidence going to the playoffs. And yes, kind of what you're saying, he didn't really have too much to do in that game, but he put a monster block on the edge uh, on on the run for a screen of Saquon. And I remember looking at it yesterday. Like I remember seeing it during the game. I remember uh, Dable mentioned, he's like, you see Kenny Holiday, that block? And like, he, he like absolutely pummels the guy, not once, but twice, like to the ground. And then like Saquon like gets the first down, boom. And like players like that don't necessarily happen unless all players are all clicking on cylinders, right? Sorry, firing right. all cylinders. And then also like the buy-in, the buy-in is huge, man. Like I was listening to other podcasts with, um, it was hockey. It was just like a, a guy used to play the Islanders. And he said like, they went from being not quite as extreme as the, as the, as the, uh, the giants, but Islanders one year went from being like the team that got scored on the most to the next year, being the team that scored, got scored on the least in one year. Right. And that was a coach. That was hundred percent a coach. The mm-hmm. players kind of say the same. They lost one or two. They came, brought in one or two. But the core is the same, and mm-hmm. he got assist. He got them to buy into a system of just being more defensive, mm-hmm. and teams was harder to score on them. Uh, it's hard for teams to score on them. And again, that's just another example of like, and look, and this coach isn't there uh, the Islanders anymore, right? And I don't notice how defense like slop like, like, but it's 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 a bit of give and take, right? Like when a coach leaves, there's something he doesn't do as well. Of there's something he might the next one might do better. So it's not all like. It's not to say it's all gravy, although I have to say the Giants have had such bad coaching for so long. This feels like everything is just better. Um, but I mean, it's yeah, I don't know. I'm just it's just finally exciting for the one of the NFL teams in New York because I think for the last 10 years, at least the last five years, the combined two worst teams or the combined like the worst two teams and on average in the NFL have been the New York teams or something stupid like that. Yeah. Um yeah. So it's just been like, I mean, even the Jets were looking good at one point and then they kind of fell yeah. apart. And that's more like a quarterback issue. And I think they'll get better of time. But it's yeah. just finally so uplifting to kind of, and also not to forget that in, right now, so I'll tell you the spreads in a second, but of the four teams in the NFC, NFC left, three of them are from the same division, man. Three yeah. are from the same division. That's how, comp- and also if you think about it, Washington were only a game or two out from getting in the playoffs too. So like, can you imagine all four teams got in at three? Like that's the kind of, and for a few, two, one or two years ago, that division was like a joke. The MCS. Yeah, East. right. Exactly. So, but everybody the, was you, fighting for like five wins. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's the, 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 I remember, I think it was during the, I think it was the COVID year when the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl, the 22, I want to say Washington won the division of a seven or nine record. Like that's, that's crazy. That's how bad the division was. And the Giants were six and ten. And they were I think if Philly had beaten Washington that last game of the year, then Washington would or Giants would have got in with a six and ten record, uh, mm-hmm. which is just kind of crazy. So like in two years, it's, it's a it's a huge, huge, huge uh, you know, improvement. But the the Giants are minus seven and a half against Philly. So everyone they they're they're predicting that the the, the Eagles are gonna beat them by at least eight. Oh, um man. So I kind of oh my goodness I wanted to bet on the last game so bad Sandra was like the Vikings no, you're not gonna bet yeah I, I wanted to bet Wait, on that one so but, much because everybody was counting them out and I was like nah yeah they're gonna step but, up even go ahead no no you go ahead no I was also gonna say like even the the decision of the head coach to put in the um you know the backups right so that they can get reps in um in the game oh in the last that, you mean the Eagles. The last game of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Older, that like, was third string quarterback. Yeah. That was such a smart move, right? But it's not a move that everybody has done. And like sometimes you wonder why are your starters like still playing in games that either don't, don't really matter. matter as much to you and or like the point differential doesn't really it doesn't make sense, right? Because the Giants like, couldn't finish any lower or higher than their seed right, to get exactly. in, right? So you're just gonna risk injury. Do you want your players injured? Yes or no right like do you want your starters injured yes or no and then it also helps build the backups confidence as well like there's yeah. just so many different elements to it like every time you break it down you just see the leadership more positive. Has, yeah the leadership has been way more positive than it has been negative and way better than it has been in the past few, few years mm. and you know i'm sure there's going to be good bad and ugly but right you know, at the end of the day it's i think it's in a right it's in a really good direction Finally. And um, yeah, and the team loves him. Team loves the head coach. Head coach loves the team. It's good to see. It's positive. Um, they, I won't I won't go into too much detail of the memes, but the memes are something else. So like 
this is they're like i love you he's like i like that me like brian i love you brian dable he's like i'm literally brian dable like you how did i change your life he's like you literally made the giants like win some games but it's just it's just funny because it's like yeah. something so simple and yeah. you see and the uh, i want to piggyback off that uh injury and wrestling players standpoint that point you made so the chargers lost right and you also mentioned betting so i want to fold to fold this one so the betting right so someone bet once the chargers were up 27 0 like a huge mm-hmm. amount of money and they lost it right because lost the game which is still like a whole other like see that's that's poor coaching that game because yeah, they're up 27 0 i didn't know this because i when that game was like one-sided i was like uh oh, this game's like darn it's boring whatever and I wanted the Chargers to win, but I was like, at least make it like a competition, at least make it like a game. And then I didn't know if you knew this. In the so typically to, to kill off a clock, you run the ball, right? Because the because mm-hmm. if you whenever you complete a run, you always keep the top clock ticking. Whereas if a pass, if it's dropped or it goes out of bounds, the clock stops, right? This coach called seven running plays the whole second half. Seven. So incomplete pass, like clock management from an NFL coach for an actual, yeah. it's like what like i learned this shit on madden when i was 12 <laughs> yeah that's literally like how i learned it though that like when you like if you're down by a touchdown all right we have two minutes to go or like tom brady i thought was used to be good at this right when you have like four five minutes six minutes and you're down by a touchdown or you're down by four it's almost worse being given four minutes because he's gonna kill that clock and give you about 10 seconds to go get it back yep. you remember that one super bowl when the giants Wanted to kill the clock and the guy accidentally ran in the end zone when he was gonna just take a knee. Bradshaw, mm-hmm. I think it was. Mm-hmm. And it was the weirdest touchdown because he was like, uh, and the Patriots let him score because the Patriots figure they get more time. They get, back. Yeah, exactly. Which is just kind of crazy to let someone score because you never want to let them score. But it, it so I'm going back with the Chargers, like in their last game of the season, we're talking about resting players, they didn't start, they didn't rest any of their players. Like they played all of them up until at the half, and they're like it's funny because I watched the NFL Red Zone and they're like, all right, so the Chargers don't really have anything to win or lose here. Like, similar to the Giants, exact same as the Giants. They were, so the Giants were sixth seed and Chargers were fifth seed, but the Chargers couldn't go any higher or any lower, right? So they're like, they literally like can't do any difference in this game. And one of the star players got injured and couldn't play in the playoffs. And you're like, yeah. you are a bonehead. Like, it doesn't. You can argue that, yes, they're always at risk of getting injured in the season. Yes, but in a game where it doesn't have any bearing. Yes, So exactly. stupid. Everyone's laughing. They're like, how does this guy still have a job right now? Especially when the next game means so much more. Yeah, I just right? don't like, get this it. This game compared to that game, it just means so much more. And then also, subconsciously, you've earned that right, right? Yeah. Like, there's a thing that they talk about, like I've heard in, uh, what's this called? Um, uh david goggins book where he talks about like navy seals and like mm. you know everything's a competition and you can't beat boat crew too or something like that where it's like everybody wants there's almost like a competitiveness within the team in order to mm. do well because once you succeed you earn a certain right and that right could be just resting you know that right, right. could be you know just taking a break that right could be you know eating before everybody else it's almost like you want to incentivize the team not necessarily by punishment but mm. like if your starters do a really good job and end up pushing, you know, to get to the playoffs, give them the opportunity to take a break before that playoff match. Maybe they right. play half the game. Maybe they don't play the game at all. And then it also helps the other guys step up, right? Like look at, um, you know, the backup, uh, what is it? Third string quarterback for the Giants, the guy who scored his first touchdown. The way NFL Davis Webb, yeah. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And his family was there, I think. And they, you know, they were all excited. Um, You know, it gives people the opportunity. Like every game is an opportunity for you to make the whole team better and then give them all their own validity. Because you don't want him getting shaky. You know, if he has to step in, you don't want it shaky and him just be like, you know, uh, looking a deer in the headlights there. Right. right. When he gets the ball, he's like, oh my God, this is too is insurmountable. It's like, no, you just played two weeks ago. But that's what I was going to say. It's, that's, that's the thing. Like, if you look at, I can't remember which team this happened to, but um, I think the Raiders years ago, they lost the first, Derek Carr was injured, like the second last game of the season. So they're going to make the playoffs. And then they had their third string quarterback into the game. And I'm like, oh, this guy is no fucking hope. Actually, the Dolphins had their third string quarterback against the Bills. And he, and he, he was like, wasn't terrible, but it's like, it's just, 
I mean, they're all athletes, but they just don't have the same caliber and they don't have the reps. So I always think, because I, I can't remember, I always think when a team is that's up by general, big. Like, that's generally speaking, too. Look at Brock Purdy, right? Yeah, but he's also got an absolute juggernaut of an offense around him. Like, I, I, could probably, <laughs> I could probably play on that fucking team and be like fucking sick quarterback rating. <laughs> I got like four touchdowns a game too. Do, he, dude seems so nonchalant as well. Yeah, it's but but again, that's the last that guy Purdy is the last pick of the draft. Mm-hmm. So it's Mr. like irrelevant. Yeah, it, it's just that's a whole other, other discussion. But uh, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I mean that's that's but that's just why the draft is like not hit and miss, but the number one pick always go is always going to a team that needs them the most right and it's usually going mm-hmm. to a team that has so many issues like this year the bears have the other one number one overall yeah i mean i think houston has more issues than they do but um yeah and that was another thing too like even when the the giants have had like losing streaks um you know the ability of the coach to say all right this season's done for let's at least get some picks out of it but then you yeah. see some teams just like win games like towards the end of the season. And it's the like, Jets, just for messing. example. Yeah, it's like you're just messing. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Like I get what I get what it is, but at the same yeah. time, it's kind of like you're not looking for the future. And I don't know. I've never been a head coach. I've never been an owner of a team. I'm sure that those are, you know, opposing. Sometimes they're mm. in conjunction with each other, but sometimes they're opposing. Um, but yeah, it's just that's just a wild situation as well something i could go on but i think we should wrap it up yeah we should totally wrap it up um to summarize it go g-man go, yeah go g-man uh, let's go g-man let's go um let's hopefully, fucking hopefully, go. hopefully we get another w i think we will against the eagles you think so i might put 10 bucks on it oh shit well you might see it. yeah you make some money from that yeah, one of my clients put ten bucks on the last game, and he got thirteen dollars back. He's like, "Let's go!" <laughs> Wait, oh, on the Giants? <laughs> yeah, last. Yeah, because the spread was only minus three and a half. Yeah, <laughs> he should put money on. Yeah, but the chief, the Chiefs too is a short. I would bet the Chiefs to win that. Um, yeah, I don't know about the bill. The the mo- the hottest one to pick is the Bills and Bengals. I think, but because they both yeah. are suspect and their wins on the weekend, so it's true. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Anyway, so Go yeah, there's that. Go G-Men. Good coaching leads to good results. And uh, yeah, we'll call it at that. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you.